So this lesson is all about biological molecules. These are molecules that are based on the element carbon, and they are found in living things. That's why they're called biological molecules. So oftentimes when you think about these, we, we're going to be talking about um, foods, because these are, of course, um, molecules that are found in foods because most of our foods at some point or other is going to come from something that was alive. So this week we'll be spending some time talking about some different foods and doing some food testing, but this lesson is all about those molecules that are found in um, living things. Now in order to understand some of these um, biological molecules, you need to understand something about carbon, because I told you that these are all based on the element carbon from the periodic table. We talked last week about covalent bonds and what that means, that atoms are sharing the electrons between them. Well, carbon atoms are special because they form four covalent bonds, and that makes them sort of adaptable. That makes them sort of flexible so that they can make different kinds of bonds with different kinds of elements. <clears throat> now, they may make um, four, four single bonds, in other words, bond with four other elements. And um, we represent the bonds by these straight lines between them. So if you look here, we have a carbon, and then there's lines going all four different directions. That would be a carbon making four bonds. We could say that um, carbon could bond to a bunch of other carbons and then have a whole bunch of hydrogens, and it would look something like that. But carbon could also make something called a double bond where they share more than two electrons. They might share four electrons. Or even carbon can form something called triple bonds where they share six electrons. And each of these would be indicated by um, the line. So this particular one has, I don't know if you can see that, but it's got two lines there between those two carbon atoms, and that signifies a double bond. Um, but what this means about carbon that's the most important thing to understand is that carbon can make big, complicated molecules, it can make chains, and it can make rings. And this is very important for living things because the large, complicated molecules that you find in living things are all composed of carbon. Now there's a couple of terms I want you to know. First of all, there are smaller carbon molecules that are formed, and these are called monomers. You can think of these as the parts of something larger. I like to think of them as like, um, like a chain, and this would be one link on the chain. And then carbon also can form large carbon molecules that we call polymers. And polymers is like a, is many monomers that are chained together, a whole long chain of them. And so I have a diagram over here. We have a monomer. Think of it like links on a chain um, or pearls on a string. And when they're linked together, they form something called a polymer. Now, the first type of biological molecule um, that I want you to know about are carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are made of, they get their name because of carbon, hydrogen, and then eight refers to oxygen. So they're made of only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and they have a certain ratio of those atoms. For every one carbon, there are two hydrogens and one oxygen. And so we say that they have the ratio CH2O. Carbohydrates are things like sugars and starches, and their role in living things, their job is to provide energy. Here is an example of some, a variety of carbohydrates. Breads are carbohydrates. All of your sugary things, cake, candies, sugar, fruits have carbohydrates, and milk. And then here we have starches like rice, potatoes, these are, I think, some French fries, and cereals are all carbohydrates as well. Now I want to talk about um, two kinds of carbohydrates separately. I want to talk about simple sugars, and then we'll talk about more complicated carbohydrates after that. Simple sugars um, are going to be monomers, for the most part, monomers of the long chain of uh, sugars that would be in a, in a larger carbohydrate. The simplest one is glucose. Glucose is a very, very common uh, simple sugar that would be found in all living things. 
it provides the fuel for all cells. So whether you're a plant cell, a fungus, an animal, a person, your cells are using glucose. It is a monosaccharide, which is a form of a monomer. Another example is something called fructose. Fructose is a simple sugar that can be found in fruits. Um, this molecule here, it looks rather large. You see it has carbons, hydrogens, and oxygens, and lots of bonds between them. But this, this molecule is glucose. And this molecule here, you see it looks similar, but not exactly the same. This is fructose. And it, actually, if you combine glucose and fructose into one larger molecule called a disaccharide, then you form this molecule here, which is um, table sugar, or also known as sucrose. Now, you can take those simple monomers, monosaccharides, those simple sugars like glucose and fructose, and you can form a long, long chain, a polymer and of, of these um, glucose or fructose molecules, and then you can form something called a polysaccharide. One example of a polysaccharide is starch. Starch looks something like this. It's a very branched structure, and starch is found in things like rice and potatoes and pasta. It's easily broken down by living things into glucose, which is um, energy for cells. Another example of a polysaccharide is something called cellulose. And cellulose has a straight structure. You can see cellulose down here. It's more of a straight structure rather than a branched structure. And because of its structure, it is very difficult to break down. In fact, animals cannot break it down. Actually, I take that back. Humans cannot break it down at all. Some animals can break it down, but humans cannot. And so we call it dietary fiber. And you can think of the foods that have high fiber. Eat some whole grain breads do, and some vegetables do, have lots of fiber in them, and that's cellulose. Another example, just for fun, is something called chitin. Chitin is a polysaccharide that makes up the exoskeleton of insects. So if you were to eat this insect, I'm not sure if it's poisonous or not, I don't think I would eat it, but um, you would get some polysaccharide, some Similar to starch, you'd be getting this polysaccharide as, as you crunched into its exoskeleton. Okay, the second type of biological molecule I want you to know about is lipids. Lipids are also called fat, oil, and there's even a lipid cholesterol. And one I didn't include here, wax. Wax is another lipid. Lipids are made of carbon and hydrogen, and sometimes there's some oxygen in there, but they're mainly carbon and hydrogen. And you're going to see their structure is very different from, from polysaccharides and monosaccharides. One special thing about lipids is that they don't dissolve in water because they're not charged. So think about our experiment last week with the water and the oil. Oil doesn't dissolve in water. It stayed separated because oil is a lipid. Now, what is the job of lipids in, in living things? Some of them form structures. They're involved in some of the structures that are in cells. But mostly lipids are for storing energy. So we take in um, carbohydrates, polysaccharides, and monosaccharides to give us instant energy. And then any of those things that we don't use right away for energy, they're going to be stored in our body as lipid. Now, lipids look like long chains a lot of the time, a whole load of carbons all in a row, and a whole load of hydrogens all around, and then you've got a little bit of oxygen on one end. Or this example where you see there are some double bonds in there, and we're going to talk about that next. The component parts of lipids are called fatty acids. Those are the monomers that sort of that make up a fat. Um, there are two kinds of fatty acids. Actually, there are more than, than two kinds, but let's just talk about these two. There are saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats um, are composed of fatty acids that have lots of hydrogens attached. Um, and what that does is it makes them solid at room temperature. Most fatty acids that are saturated come from animals although there's some exceptions. So here's my example up here. 
saturated fats have lots of hydrogens all around and it makes them solid at room temperature. Unsaturated fats are different. Most of them are liquid at room temperature, so think about oils. Oils are unsaturated. And most unsaturated fats come from plants, although there's some exceptions to that as well. So if you look at this unsaturated um, fatty acid, you can see that there's lots of double bonds, which means it has fewer hydrogens. And what that means is that this fat can move around more when the molecules are all together and, and it makes for something like an oil, which is a liquid. Unsaturated fats are much healthier than saturated fats in your diet. Another uh, lipid that I wanted you to know about are phospholipids, and we'll talk about those later. They're important parts that make up the structure of cells. And finally, cholesterol. Cholesterol is also a lipid. It has a ring structure and it's important in the formation of a variety of hormones in your body, including testosterone and, um, well, estrogen and, and some others that we can talk about later. This is olive oil, which would be unsaturated, and this is butter, which would be a saturated fat. So you think about the difference between these two. This is a solid at room temperature. This is a liquid at room temperature. All right, the third type of biological molecule that I want you to know about are proteins. I think some of you have heard of these before. Proteins are very large and complex molecules. Their three-dimensional structure comes from hydrogen bonds. So last week we talked about hydrogen bonds and how, what forms those. Well, water's not the only thing that has hydrogen bonding. Some other molecules have it, and proteins are one of them. The hydrogen bonds in proteins hold the protein in a complicated structure that's important for how it works in, in living things. So proteins are important um, in structures of living things. They compose muscles, bones, hair, and even the horns of this rhinoceros. This is all made of protein called keratin, the same stuff that makes up your hair and your fingernails. Now proteins are polymers like we talked about and they're made up of monomers that are called amino acids. So amino acids built together form a protein chain. And it's the sequence of these amino acids in a protein that determines the structure and the function of the protein. So it will determine how the protein is um, structured because of the hydrogen bonding, and then also the, the way that it's structured will determine its function or how it works. For instance, this protein, you see its shape is kind of coming around like this, and that's due to um, the sequence of the amino acids. These are a variety of amino acids shown. Down here you see three different amino acids to give you an idea of what those look like. They look very similar, but they're not exactly the same. What they do have in common is they have this little group that has a nitrogen atom and this little part that has oxygen. Here's, here are some examples of proteins. It's not just meat. Here we have, of course, chicken and fish and beef, but also eggs have protein, nuts have protein, and beans also have protein. Now I do want to talk a little bit, spend a little bit of time on a very special kind of protein that's very important in living things, and these are called enzymes. Enzymes are proteins, and they have a special job in living things. Their job is to speed up chemical reactions that are vital to life. So when you think about all the things that you have to do from walking and running to thinking to digesting your food, um, all of those things that you do, they're all dependent on chemical reactions that take place within the cells. Without enzymes, these chemical reactions would happen so slowly you wouldn't survive. Okay, so without enzymes, they're ex they're absolutely important to you because you cannot live without them. Now, we're going to talk more in class about this, but enzymes are, this word is denatured, denatured. Enzymes are denatured by changes in temperature and pH, okay? And this word denatured means they don't work anymore, okay? So if you take a protein, like an enzyme, like a protein, any protein, and you um, 
raise the heat up too high or you put it in acid, um, the enzyme won't work anymore. Okay, and so we can talk about that more in class about what the, the consequence of that is. But um, in order to understand this, I have a few pictures here. If you think about what this egg looks like raw, this is a raw egg. I'm sure you've all seen a raw egg. The white part of the egg is clear and the yellow part is runny. And then you think about what an egg looks like after it's been subjected to heat. It's been cooked. The clear part becomes solid instead of liquid and it turns white. And if it's really cooked, it turns brown. And the center of the egg, not here, but you know, when you cook an egg, the center will turn um, from runny, it will turn solid, and then also it changes color a little bit. It turns to a lighter yellow color. And all of those changes that occur in that egg are, are occurring because the protein is being denatured, that we're denatured. Um, and so if that happens to an enzyme, it doesn't work anymore. Um, so that's temperature. Some of you may know what this food is. This is ceviche, and I think I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but it is um, some seafood that is chopped, and um, onions and tomato and lime are added, cilantro, and it is not cooked. So you would put in sometimes shrimp, sometimes scallops, sometimes fish, and it's not cooked. What they What is done when you make this dish is that you put in some lime juice or some lemon juice. And what that will do is it will cause a change in the protein of the shrimp or the scallops or the fish in such a way as it seems to be cooked. It's because the protein is being denatured, as I said before. So this dish works because you're adding acid. There's a change in pH and the acid changes the protein in such a way that it, it um, is now just like it had been cooked. And um, again, if that happens to enzymes, they don't work anymore. The other thing about enzymes that I want you to know is that they are specific to the job they do. Enzy you have hundreds of different enzymes in your body and they each have a specific job. You don't have just one enzyme that does all the jobs. They have very specific jobs that they do in your body. Okay, last thing and we're almost done. The fourth type of biological molecule are called nucleic acids. These contain the information for how to make proteins and really they determine the traits and characteristics of living things. Extremely important and we will study these later on in the year. But there are two kinds of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA and we'll spend a lot of time on them. You've probably heard of DNA um, and that comes later in the year. So this turned out to be a little bit longer than I thought it would be, but we'll talk about these things next week. Have a good weekend. Made with DoodleCast Pro.